I wanted to come on here today and talk about something which is really important to me and I think it's because I get so many messages particularly from young girls about how to become successful and what's funny is is that I think that people feel like there is a formula or they want the top three things you know to ensure that they get to that place but the truth is if there was that easy formula or those top three things that you could do everyone would be doing it and I think that's the really important thing to understand. My journey as a dentist was never really easy to be honest. At school I was was always creative, I loved drama, I loved art, I loved theatre. Coming from a Middle Eastern background, it was always drilled into me that I needed to be a medical professional, an engineer or something that was vocational. You know, I was lucky because my aunt was a dentist and I found her really inspiring and I spent a lot of time with her as a child and when I was 11, I would go into her practice and shadow her and I knew that I wanted to be a dentist from a really young age. But I guess I always had that dichotomy inside me where I was torn because I wanted to do stuff that was creative or things that were a little bit less structured I guess. I didn't know what to do. When I was at school I wasn't particularly academic. I had to work really 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 hard to get my grades. In fact I remember being inspired when I was 15 by somebody I used to hang out with outside of school and he got incredible grades for his GCSEs. He was a little bit older and I thought you know what it's quite cool to get good grades. Having never had good grades before I decided to push myself and I was actually encouraged by my English literature teacher who I remember really well and I decided that I really enjoyed English. I loved reading, I loved analysing characters, I loved the psychology behind each character that was built, I loved understanding their personalities, their struggles, you know, all of these people that are 3D, you know, they're not just these two-dimensional characters. So for me, my love and passion for English grew, but I knew that I had to be good at science to get into dental school. and. I did push myself really, really hard. I started studying for exams three to four months before the exams were actually due to be taken. And that was because it just didn't come naturally to me. So I'd lock myself away. I would also team up with people in my class that I knew were really good at subjects and we would push each other. When it came to actually getting into dental school, I applied to the dental schools that I wanted to go to. And there's very few dental schools. So the way that dentistry goes is, is that you have to apply, you get an interview and then you get offered a position. And I applied to four places because you can only apply to four places and I only got an offer for Leeds and Bristol and Bristol was my first choice and I remember going to the interview and I was really flamboyant and really glamorous and pretty much myself and I went to the interview and I knew immediately that they weren't going to give me a place because I'd gone in there and I'd shown my personality and they didn't like that and they didn't offer me a position. I was absolutely distraught and then I went to my Leeds interview and I totally toned it down. I pretty much pretended to be someone I wasn't if I'm completely honest. I didn't wear any makeup, I had my hair in a very plain manner, I wore a monochrome outfit and I just spoke about things I guess they wanted me to speak about. So there was no artistic flair or glamour or anything like that and I got into dental school. Dental school was always a little bit of a struggle for me, I didn't feel like I particularly fitted in very well with anyone, I just, I don't know, I just found the people that were really obsessed with science were not my kind of people and I ended up living with people that did English literature, drama, history history of art and I just loved engaging in conversations with them about people, books and literature and drama and I used to go to the theatre all the time and analyse the characters and do all the things that I learned in English literature and art and I got through dental school but again once I'd finished dental school we had to go for interviews to get a job and when I went for those interviews I found it really really difficult because dental practices they were interviewing people to bring them in for a year to do their NHS training and no one wanted to give me a position, no one even offered me a job because they just didn't like me you know? and I'd compare myself to other people in my year and I'd be like why, why don't they want me there? Why, why am I not getting offered a position? And it was heart-wrenching for me and I really didn't know what to do and I think it was probably one of the most difficult times of my life. Eventually I did go into a practice in Kent and it was a nice family-run practice but it wasn't the kind of dentistry I wanted to be doing. I had met my colleague who now works for me actually and he was in my study group, we studied together at the hospital and he was working at a practice that offered him a vast amount of opportunities. He was able to do a lot of private dentistry, he was able to do the dentistry he wanted to do. For me, I just was doing that kind of everyday dentistry, you know, drill, fill, pay the bill as I call it. And I wanted my dentistry to have more meaning, I wanted my dentistry to have an impact on people. So 
I started saving up all of my money and I was investing loads of time and money on courses. The point is I didn't really even care if I had the opportunity to practice the stuff that I was learning on the patients that I had. I wanted to learn those skills and I wanted the existing patients that I had to see the value in what I had learned. So after I came back from the courses, I would offer these treatments to patients. I was just doing simple little things like perhaps a white filling instead of a silver filling and I was building up a portfolio. Eventually after a year, I started CV dropping all over London. I didn't care if they were offering jobs to anyone. What I did was is that I just sent a cover letter explaining to people the value that I saw that I had and could offer to their practices and my little portfolio. Eventually a practice called me up in High Street Kensington and they said, you know, we're not really looking for anyone but we've got somebody going on maternity leave so why don't you come in and cover that maternity leave. So I did and I went in and I said I have a mission now to make sure that this practice keeps me on beyond maternity leave and I remember my boss at the time he was telling me about a practice in Chelsea and he said oh I just don't know if this practice is what I need or what I want you know the practice wasn't doing as well as one in Kensington it was seeing about one patient a month and I turned around and I said could I come and work in this practice and he thought I was crazy in fact everyone thought I was crazy I would ask advice from my mentors or people around me and they'd say why would you want to work in a practice that has zero patients a month zero goodwill why would you want to go and work in that environment and to be honest, my answer was because I want to prove to myself that I can make it work, that you know, if even if you have nothing and you really believe that you can make something work without the help, without the luck, without all the things that people are saying, you can do it for yourself. And so I went into this practice and I had zero patients a month and I started thinking about what can make it work. So I thought of the two things that changed my practice, that was Instagram and Invisalign, two eyes as I call it. And Instagram was new, you know, it was at its embryonic stages when I started it and I was really inspired by people that are doing fashion and food and all the other things that require an artistic flair and I said dentistry could be up there dentistry can be artistic dentistry can be creative why don't we use it as a platform to engage with patients and empower the public and that's exactly what I started doing so I started an Instagram I had no idea what I was doing you know just posting before and after pictures trying to understand what people want I was actually approached by an influencer I did her teeth she shared her story and her sharing her story was so powerful because people trust people people at the end of the day. You know, when you get a recommendation from a friend, you trust them, so you go to that person they've recommended. But imagine if somebody shares their experience where there are thousands of people watching their audience, or tens of thousands, or millions, or whatever it is, you know, they're sharing that experience, and all those people trust them, and therefore they can come to you. After about a year, I turned the practice from seeing, you know, one or two patients a month to being fully booked for the next three months, and then six months, and now I'm fully booked, you know, for the next eight months. And I'm really lucky because I had built that, and I made the practice so busy that I ended up buying the practice. It's been a hard journey but it's been amazing and I think that it's really important that people understand that if you really believe that you can do something you can do it. I think passion is the most important thing and I knew that I wanted to create a practice that made a massive difference to people's lives. I wanted to change the perceptions that people had of dentists and dentistry. That was my mission statement and that's what I live by every single day. I know that everything I do is geared towards that. Social media has been a great tool because it's allowed me to connect with my audience. It's allowed me to connect with people and patients and help people overcome fears. My heart was actually broken a few months ago because a girl had broken down in the chair, you know, saying that she was 25 and she felt that she was at her prime and she was really unhappy with lots of things in her life, including her teeth, and that she felt that her life was almost going to be over. And I remember thinking that my 20s were going to be my prime, but actually, you hit 30 and life just gets so much better because you start being more comfortable about who you are and you get to know yourself more and you get to understand how to manage, you know, those thoughts in your head and recognize that out of adversity comes opportunity. I guess I just wanted to inspire and let any of those people that have doubts, you know, know that I've been through that too, but it's just about pushing through and understanding how to overcome those hard times. And what you see online isn't always the full picture. You know, there's always a story behind every single person and what they've created. So I hope that, you know, that's helped some of you understand a bit more about my story and how I came to do what I'm doing. And I hope to see you guys for the next chapter of my life.